Well, I'd be happy to. I, at first, I want to say thank you uh, to everybody here for having me. It's been a great pleasure to be invited to the KDIAF. I've been lucky that I've had many experiences that have been what you would call unforgettable. Um, uh, working for Disney and Burbank uh, on Chicken Little and projects uh, such as Rapunzel, uh, which came out as Tangled uh, for Disney recently and others, has really been something that I never could have imagined. But I think that the most unforgettable experience was heading up the China local content team in Beijing uh, for Disney. This was a initiative to take local artists, Chinese artists, and do Disney quality work for television, for film. We did film uh, and television work in animation and also uh, for live action. And it was really, in terms of unforgettable, a chance for me to work with some of the best talent in China, in Asia, and to combine the quality and the family values of the Walt Disney Company with the type of humor and the energy uh, of China and, and of Asia. So that for me was a, a golden opportunity and really a learning experience. I, uh, even though I was the leader of the department, I learned a lot about how to create content for audiences in Asia and specifically in, in mainland China and uh, Asia Pacific in general. So in both environments, in both China and also in the U.S., um, uh, there's a lot of corporate opinion that you have for these films. It's not just an artist or a director making decisions by themselves, but you have uh, committees of people, uh, executives, creatives, who are giving their opinion about how the film should be. And so this is actually very similar in the U.S. and China. In the U.S., the good thing about having a mature market is that you have a very professional uh, set of practices that people operate by, and that results in usually fairly good films. Um, or at least something you can watch without leaving the theater in disgust uh, because you go, oh my god, that's, that's just too bad. How did that make it onto the, onto the screen? Um, but because it is so mature, it's also very locked in. New filmmakers, new ideas have trouble breaking through sometimes. In mainland China, um, the relative immaturity of the film market, the film industry, means that Number one, um, people are sometimes making decisions who have no right to be making those decisions. Uh, those decisions are not necessarily based upon uh, the best creative interests or even sometimes the best business interests of the films. Uh, but at the same time, uh, people do things that aren't possible anywhere else in the world because there are no rules in many cases. So it's possible to have certain types of films and certain types of opportunities in China that you can't have anywhere else. So it's really a mixed bag of, of pros and cons. Uh, definitely. So when we started working for Disney in China, I was at a company that I helped to found called uh, Moli Jiaozi, and it's Magic Dumpling. And uh, my partners and I were approached by Disney to help them set up this local content team in Beijing. And uh, we basically brought in most of the people from our company plus some other new hires to build this team for Disney. And they acquired a couple of our projects. Uh, one of them was Banqing Baliang, uh, a stone lion project. It's a stone lion buddy comedy about like these two lions who are like the dumb and dumber of stone lions uh, who get into all sorts of different adventures and misadventures, you might say. That was not a film, but a TV series. And it premiered at number one uh, on Shanghai Media Group. It premiered at number one on CCTV. Uh, we only had one season of it, but it did very, very well in the ratings. And it was, I think, a pretty good combination of what you asked about earlier, Disney quality with something that really appeals to uh, local Chinese culture and, and sense of humor and so forth. Okay. Do you want to clap again? <laughs>